a uh, few things. There won't be any live demonstration. We have only 15 minutes. Um, so my name is Saurabh. I am uh, interested in systems engineering. I work at Flipkart. Um, I used to be in Delhi. I used to organize uh, meetups and all. Um, so that's how I got engaged with the community and uh, um, love to meet people. Um, yeah. So this is not a server hardening talk. And uh, uh, we won't be talking about live kernel patching, although this, uh, this is a step towards that, which can help you, you know, uh, get to live kernel patching. Um, the talk is aimed at uh, system engineers, but uh, anybody can do it on your own system as well, as well as if you have a small scale, small scale system, that's also work, just to keep your security uh, standpoint good enough. Um, you might have encountered this uh, things that I will talk about today. And if you get stuck, you can stop me at the conference and ask me questions if you have used it. If you have not used it and want to use it, you can ask me questions. You can uh, talk to me about how uh, to do it, how to go about doing it. All right, so we'll keep the talk concise, 15 minutes. And uh, if you have time, questions at the end. Uh, this is the index we'll talk about uh, in this order. Um, so the first thing is software has bugs, software has software exploits, um, and therefore we need to keep the systems up to date uh, with security fixes at the very least. Um, so how do we go about doing that is, uh, how do we keep systems up to date? We do, if you are in Debian, uh, you do app update, app upgrade, you are in other systems, RPM uh, based or some other ones. Uh, you have similar commands, so you use this. Um, reboot, your, reboot your system and you're done. It's uh, all the patches are fixed and uh, um, it's up to date. And at least uh, the CVs are all covered, exploits are all covered. Um, this works great, but the problem, uh, yeah. What about when you want to update, you know, a lot of systems, you know, 10,000 or more systems. Is there a safe way to do that? Uh, these systems are running uh, critical workloads. You cannot just reboot them. You have to go through, you know, a cycle, maintenance cycle, for example. You have to wait for one month or two months if you have a large amount of systems. And by that time, the software packages gets updated or the exploits gets updated. There are new set of vulnerability that would come up. Every, it, it comes up every single day. Um, how do we do that uh, without breaking your applications? If you, for example, say update a certain packages, you will have dependent services which are still using the old binary. You can look at uh, this information using LSOF and those commands. So what about app mark, which is a way to hold your packages, pin your packages? Um, this works, um, but you need to manage that programmatically. Somebody, some user has to uh, go ahead and uh, manage the pinning so that the packages stay at a particular version and then once it's safe to do that, it uh, un unmark it and then uh, update it. Um, so how do we solve this problem is using a package called unattended upgrade. It's available in Debian and uh, Debian based uh, uh, system as well as I think other systems as well. So how it works is, uh, how does it work is, uh, you, in your system, you have uh, timers. You have system D timers that works uh, uh, every day. Th these particular scripts run every morning, 6 a.m. And uh, it runs the same apt update and apt upgrade command internally. Um, and then it looks, and then we have an ability to configure uh, the source from where the packages needs to be or the software needs to be uh, fetched from. So you have those repos. Um, so you can configure from which repo you want to upgrade and which repo you don't want to upgrade. You can, you know, blacklist and whitelist. So blacklist is that you can using you can use regex to um, use a particular pattern, and uh, uh, again it's the same with whitelist. But how the whitelist works is it only install a certain packages, and if you have a dependency which is in the blacklist package, that dependency won't be upgraded. So that's how you use the 
whitelist and then the packages are updated, uh, you're good to go. So enabling and how do we enable is uh, you uh, use this conf, uh, 20 upgrades, uh, you enable this and uh, so basically the update package list is apt update and the annotator upgrade is the enabling script uh, that is system timer and that which internally runs apt upgrade. Um, this is the uh, repo configurations on from which repos do you want your uh, packages to come from. So if you want uh, only security packages you use, Debian security repo or you want um, from the updates package you can uh, update repository, you can fetch from there and uh, this is how the blacklisting uh, component works. You can use the regex component that's a, uh, which I talked about. Um, whitelist is similar, uh, this again honors the dependency uh, if the packages were to be updated. Um, so if, if the system is not clean, you can use uh, uh, th this particular command gets uh, invoked internally, uh, but the updates will still get installed. Um, you can uh, perform an upgrade before shutting out the machine and automatically send emails uh, to the, you know, whether you have uh, SRE sort of concept or uh, systems engineer sort of concept, you can uh, configure that to send you an email about the changes which fetches from the app list changes and uh, news component. Um, so there are more problems with that. Um, so even if a package is updated, that doesn't really mean that these dependent services are patched. Some services has uh, some packages, you know, for example, Debian has a post install script which uh, when a package is installed, it triggers a, a post install script which internally uh, restarts the services which are dependent on it. So a lot of services don't do that, a lot of packages don't do that, um, which means there are services still using old binaries which are not patched, which, are, which, has still, which still has the exploits, which still has the security, uh, you know, issues. So those are such as libraries, so even if you install say Python uh, library, Python uh, package or Python library, anything, uh, the old packages will still, uh, the services which are still depending on the libraries will still be using that uh, old uh, libraries with exploits. So to uh, cover that, you need some other process. So which is uh, system reboot is one way to do that, but as we talked about it, takes a lot of maintenance cycle, uh, this won't work for large scale. Um, so we have something called need restart. Uh, in uh, Red Hat base it's check restart. Um, these uh, daemons, this is a daemon based service which checks for uh, packages uh, which require a restart or dependency services which require a restart since it's still uh, using the old one. Um, this is how we configure it. There is three ways you can do it interactively if you have one, one or two systems and you can also do it automatically. Um, or you can uh, print it out and uh, handle it later on your own. So there are way, ways to do that. So these are the services it sort of uh, are, is able to restart it on it on so. Now um, services might require system reboots. So there are certain services such as dbus and uh, maybe systemd login, but those won't, cons but let's say the example of dbus. Um, those services requires a system reboot and there's no escaping that. So the way to do that is, one way to do that is kernel eye patching, the other is reboot obviously. Um, you can also define uh, the restarts behavior. For example, if you have two services, if you want A service to be restarted before the B service, you can configure that in a way so that, for example, if your network is not even up, um, the other services might fail. So you might want to restart your network first and then uh, uh, the service which is using the network. Um, yeah, so the restart.d is where you define your service. Um, visible into, into changes, that means uh, what all happened uh, in your system what all changes didn't happen. So this app list changes command helps you uh, 
with figuring out what packages got updated, what all changes that happened in those packages. And that gets sent to you, you can configure it to send to you on your email. And you can look at the logs, which is TPKG log. It shows uh, the packages that were updated and the dependent service which were triggered. And the program under upgrade logs. Uh, it shows what packages it found for updates and uh, what packages it has withheld. Um, so one of the implementation you can do is you can also create a systemd script. It's uh, 50 or 100 lines of code. And then you can send it to your uh, alerting mechanism uh, that you have in your, uh, in, your, in your system if you are managing uh, large systems. Um, so the future scope for this or homework for you guys is uh, kernel live patching. Um, you know, how do we, uh, this is one step. You can also, for example, I showed uh, that we have blacklisted uh, uh, the Linux packages. So if you can upgrade Linux packages and uh, figure out a way, um, so there are a lot of solutions for that, which is kpatch, ksplice, and all that. Um, you figure out a stable way to uh, get the, kind of, uh, the uh, Linux packages upgraded and also other packages which are useful for you. Um, this will be helpful uh, for the first step, and the next step is live patching. And then uh, rollback upon failures. There are various implementations. ButterFS, you can take snapshots and all. Um, I think RPM provides uh, this um, uh, history and some systems such as Gaix and all, uh, uh, which uses libos3, uh, I think, um, to ma ma manage the state of the system. Um, and roll back up on failures. That's implementations are there, but it's up to you to explore uh, which works for you. That's pretty much it for my talk. Um, we have time for questions, I think. So my question is like, uh, whatever you showed in this screen, right? So it's all mostly like system D dependent. So in case if we have a sub, like an init system, so what are the other dependencies we need to achieve the sim similar things? So without system D? Yeah. Is it um, first thing, is, is it possible or like it's too system D dependent? I think we, I mean, I tested it specifically in Debian. Um, so it is. You can run it without systemd because the, the script is essentially a shell script. You can uh, convert it. No, since you mentioned Gux and other OSs like that, so it may not have systemd. Uh, which one are you talking about? Are no, no, talking about the you're giving, giving example about Gux. Okay, the, yeah. yeah, yeah, so that, that itself, you know, it's just a script. You can directly run um, unattended upgrades, uh, like the command itself there. You can directly run it, you can create your own script. And the script that I talked about, that is just a cron job, essentially. So it just runs at 6 a.m. So you can configure it as a cron job to call that script, uh, which is just unattended upgrade. That's all. That's a command. Um, and you can pass specific arguments. So like you want to run it as a uh, you know, dry mode or so that it doesn't really uh, make any changes on your system, if you want to see that. Um, yeah, without systemd, it's just script and so, cron. So we have to handle those things on um, Yeah, I mean, the the app daily timer is just uh, uh, cron, essentially. Uh, this one is just a cron job to call the unattended upgrade command. So the, this is helpful in, in case you have a systemd uh, uh, based system, but without that, it also works very well. Um, so I, I, for example, I want to do, uh, I don't want to make changes in my system. So I manually configured it in a way that, hey, I want to see what changes it is making in the system. So I just created a script and the cron job is there. I configured it to call that script and I can see the output. Hey, this is the changes that it's going to happen. Should I, should I want to go ahead and do it? So that automation, that level of automation is uh, very easy without systemd at all. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, so you mentioned about uh, this uh, restarts, right? So uh, yeah. So will these be like staggered restarts, or uh, you can schedule them? How it is? So um, 
how it works is it uh, it has a, a trigger with the apt uh, pin walk something like that and then it calls the need restart uh, automatically on its own uh, and my question comes because you don't want like a lot of servers to restart at the same yes. time yes so not this this is service restarts system reboots are totally different oh sorry this, i, I yeah. mean about reboots sorry, yeah, about yeah. Restarts. so you can disable it like uh, you can have it um, um, a list mode only so the list mode only prints it out it does nothing okay. and then you can configure it on your own uh, to uh, do it the automatic restart or you can use that data that hey these services require restarts do i have any i don't have you know data to show but yeah so it will be like a system d service uh, or if not system d then any other service will be there um, you can restart those services um, if it's an etc based restarts etc um, some service uh, basically restart or if you have daemons those yeah. it will also print out so containers and uh, user sessions and shell sessions and so, so things like that that you can you get the data and then you manage it on your own you can also send it to i think nagios and all those plugins there is a way to do that um, yeah yeah thanks easy to um so you you mentioned that uh, there are thousands of machines right like so how do you maintain this configuration among all of them and how do you uh, do the updates yeah good question so there are a lot of ways um i have explored two ways uh, one is to uh one is a non fail safe method one is to have your one single server to manage uh, the enabling and disabling of the updates whether you want to enable them or not so sometimes you may want to keep the system clean and not do anything for certain events um so you can uh, s simply do um you know ansible or anything from a single system the other way is uh, some people hate it but system d uh, you can configure a system d uh, timer or uh, a script that runs every day and then looks at uh, 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 whether you want it enabled or not so that's pretty much uh, two ways that i have known so the first method has an issue of uh, uh, um, you know single point of failure the single system can crash down but all the data uh, can go so that is one issue the other issue is when you have hundreds of systems or thousands of systems you instead of a single point you can configure it uh, as a system to service and it will run on all of them so that works so if someone one single system fails all of the systems are still running and that will keep sending the keep updating the system and keep sending the data to your monitoring pipeline okay uh, i have one more question so how do you maintain like if there are a stateful applications running in some of the machines then how do you do that patching in there like because if the applications are stateless then you can just maybe if you want to reboot it like that's fine but in case if it is a stateful machine like that would be very hard right like so how do you maintain that yeah so that's the good thing about debian um the updates that happen are minor patches and uh, less than that there is no major pack major releases in the security uh, patch set and it's mostly a uh, non dependent service like you can configure for example if your service depends on a particular service uh, important service and it can lead to a crash you can specify in the blacklist file and not update it at all so maybe libc is if you are using a system based uh, system um, uh, software or something you can uh, blacklist libc uh, to not update it so um, how do you figure that out uh, which one to blacklist and which one to not uh, that's uh, based on your application like okay. which app, which sort of application you are running i don't know maybe uh, if you are running a python based then you might not uh, update it um, but uh, mostly in debian we have seen it's pretty safe um because he, it's well tested and uh, there are you know <laughs> there are strict policies okay then you need to uh, inspect every patch and then see like what what would be, what all the things that is exactly a good not data really data. i think you can you, like 6 months of time you can take and figure out does it work well or not uh yeah uh, i have a question about needs restart uh, you showed that uh, re the directory restart dot d uh ideally shouldn't system d handle uh, you know uh, the service bring up so when you restart a service it should know that it needs couple of other services and then 
it restarts them first and then restarts your service, something like that. Uh, I don't really understand the uh, need of restart.d directory, as you said uh, in the uh, configuration. So, I don't think it does. Like for uh, a particular service, if you are updating one service, it will restart that particular service. But there are dependent services. And uh, I don't think it is able to figure out that these are the dependent services. And uh, I think need restart looks at the LSF output and it checks for the deleted uh, section and uh, finds out, okay, these particular services require, uh, are still using the old binaries. The, so there is uh, this section uh, uh, services name and then there is uh, dependence uh, services which got updated, but these are deleted, though. these are still using the old binary. So uh, it figures out from that, maybe uh, system D hasn't implemented or I don't know how it works for, from their side. I don't think it is updated uh, at that moment. But for uh, the Debian packages, it has the uh, triggers, which gets triggers after, which is the post-install script uh, to update the services afterwards, which are dependent. And that also needs to be configured by the package, who, who is the package maintainers. Yeah. Uh, it's not a question. I would like to answer that gentleman's question about uh, whether it's system specific or not. Uh, something like this is also available in Alpine, which uses OpenRC. So uh, there are other distributions that does something like this. Yeah. So it's available there. Yeah, thanks. Okay, that was a really en engaging session. Thank you, Saurabh, for that. Thank you.